Welcome to this lesson on the first issue you should be looking at in every executive assessment sentence correction, subject verb agreement. So let's begin just by rehashing the question logistics for this format you'll encounter on the verbal section. First, assume that there's going to be three to five sentence corrections in every 14 question verbal section of the EA. You're going to have one to three sentence corrections in each seven question half, and there will be the least to read on a sentence correction compared to any other question in the verbal section. Now, some best practices. First, remember that you do want to spend on average 90 seconds per sentence correction. They just should go a bit faster than everything else on the section. So that means a maximum of two minutes for any sentence correction in either verbal section half. You want to minimize yourself to a single reread of anything to avoid wasting time. And that means you're basically going to read the sentence at the very beginning and read the sentence at the very end so that you're not wasting time. You'll want to beware of just listening for errors because unfortunately, most people's ear for English has been contaminated by some conversational language that isn't actually technically correct, but you can instead look for differences that might indicate are common sentence correction issues, starting with subject verb agreement. So when you're seeking subject verb agreement errors, you want to track any changes in number from singular to plural in the underlined and non underlined portions of the sentence as presented. You want to note potentially added or omitted S's indicating plurals in the choices. And you'll want to potentially remove from consideration descriptive phrases that might be in between the subject and the verb to simplify your evaluation of the proper number, singular or plural, for both the subject and the verb. Now, strategically, this means that subject verb agreement should really be the primary issue to evaluate for all sentences as written. And that's going to be somewhat simple to, to evaluate once you focus on it as an issue because you can track your subjects and verbs deliberately on your initial read to potentially identify this relatively common issue in the sentence corrections. You have to remember that a main subject and verb pair is actually what makes a sentence a sentence. So that's going to be required for any sentence to be considered complete. And you'll want to read your choice back into the original sentence as written to confirm that the main subject is paired with a main verb. But remember as well that you need to focus on your intended meaning rather than just auto matching grammar when you're working through these types of issues deliberately. Now, a complete sentence. Let's look at a couple of examples, starting with Billy ran away from the growling dog. Pretty straightforward. We know who the subject is. It's Billy. We know what Billy did. He ran away and we know what he ran away from. It was the growling dog. You can also do this in what is known as passive voice. So the growling dog made Billy run away. Well, really, it's Billy ran away from the growling dog. But this is still a complete sentence because now we've just made our growling dog the subject and used the kind of clunkier uh, verb of made as the main verb for the sentence. But this is still complete. We've got a subject and a verb. So we can also have as short of a complete sentence as Billy ran. We actually don't need to know what Billy ran from yet. We could learn that in the next sentence, but we've got a subject and we've got a verb, so you don't necessarily need an object. And Billy ran is a complete sentence, although it's much shorter than what you're likely to encounter on the exam for certain. Now, let's take a look at what would qualify as incomplete sentences. So starting with Billy ran from. So if I add the word from, now I need an object because for that preposition. And I just say Billy ran from. I don't know what Billy ran from. And the complete sentence needs to introduce no questions that need to be answered in order for the idea to be complete. So Billy ran from is not going to be a complete sentence, even though Billy ran was. The dog growling at Billy. Well, this just describes the dog, even though we've got what seems like it could be a verb of growling. Growling is the action that the dog is doing, and it really is describing the dog, not giving me what the dog actually did. So the dog growling at Billy creates a modification sort of phrase for the dog, but it doesn't say what that dog actually did. And similarly, Billy, while walking down the street and thinking about his fear of dogs growling, Again, just a bunch of descriptive phrases for Billy. We don't know what Billy actually did while he was walking down the street. Now, just some definitions of terms. And one of the things we'll be focused on as we talk about sentence corrections in the executive assessment is actually not really caring all that much about these definitions. We're not going to discuss things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, adjectival phrases or dangling participles or 
anything of that nature. We just need to know the real meat and potatoes of sentences to succeed on this portion of the exam. So we're just going to define really the basics. So subject is noun. It's the main actor of your sentence. Your verb is the main action for the sentence. And we've established that you need a subject and a verb paired properly in terms of number and without ambiguity for a sentence to be complete. And your object is just the thing that the main action is done to. And again, that's going to be a noun as well. So that object we mentioned earlier with the complete sentence, Billy Rand, not necessary, but likely to be present in just about every sentence correction that you encounter on the executive assessment. Now, let's take a look at a sample sentence uh, correction and think about the issues of singular and plural. So you want to proactively identify the main subject of the sentence as written. And so let's read this together first. The effects of poor soil clearly shown in the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 was demonstrated again in the Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989. So we can see that the effects of poor soil is our main subject here. And you have to be aware of mistaking a descriptive element for the main subject. So we're going to actually eliminate from consideration as the subject of poor soil because that's just describing the effects. So the effects are our main subject of this sentence. Then we've got to go find the verb for that main subject. And we can temporarily ignore more descriptive elements to, dis to check the agreement between the subject and the verb. So we've got effects was demonstrated. And that may, and I know I just said don't listen to how it sounds, but this one probably jumps out to you immediately. You're like, well, effects were, it shouldn't be a was. And the reason for that is that usually plural subjects end in S, um, but plural verbs do not. So effects was, it's just kind of a convention of English, is going to be incorrect. And so now that we bring in the answer choices, we know that anything that involves effects and a singular verb such as was can be eliminated. So that means that choice A is out, choice C is out, and choice E is actually out for that same categorical error, even though it changed to is, because affix R would be the proper pair there. So we can eliminate those three answer choices immediately, and you can see how this really helps with efficiency in evaluating EA sentence corrections. Now, we've got to look at the remaining answer choices. We've got B and D, and subtly they changed it in D. It goes from effects to effect. And if you're not careful, you might pick D because you're like, ooh, I wanted a were, but I need it to be effects were. So there goes D. Of course, read the answer that you like back into the original sentence as your final step. And you'll want to reintroduce all of those descriptors that we've been ignoring. So the effects of poor soil clearly shown in the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 were demonstrated again in the Loma Prieto earthquake of 1989 that captures the original intent and fixes the original issue of number with subject verb agreement. So we would happily select B and move on with this one. Now, the other way that we talked about subject verbs having issues is in terms of completion. And this honestly can be at issue with some of the smallest underlines. And smaller underlines can, in many cases, be harder to adjudicate because there's less opportunity to find different errors. So we, again, will proactively identify the main subject of the sentence as written, and we will read this sentence. So most current benthic marine research, including chemical ecology research, at Palmer Station and other sites along the Western Antarctic Peninsula carried out in open water without solid overhead ice cover and the equipment and techniques are very much like those used in colder temperate water. So we see most current benthic marine research. That's a mouthful. So we're going to temporarily overlook some descriptors to simplify that subject as well. So we're just going to call it most work research. Then we need to go find possible verbs for the main subject. And we've got two. We've got carried out in and are. So we need to consider our answer choices at this point as well. And we can see that there are some different options. We've got carried out and is carried out. So you need to consider the meaning to determine whether verbs can potentially apply to that main subject. So we've got most research. And again, we're going to not cross it out on the uh, left hand side here, but we can just go from most research and jump to carried out because including chemical ecology research, just describes the research. At Palmer Station and other sites along the Western Antarctic Peninsula just describes the research. So let's consider most research carried out in open water without solid overhead ice cover. And the equipment and techniques are very much like those used in colder temperate waters. Well, if it's going to be correct as written, that means the research 
is used in colder temperate waters and it should be carried out. So this doesn't make logical sense, which allows us to eliminate A, B, and C immediately because we go, we actually need the research to do something that does make sense. And that would be when the research is carried out. So we then want to consider the remaining answer choices against the non underlying portion because we've only got one difference. We've got in versus on. And we see carried out in can be compared to used in colder temperate water. So we know that it's talking about things that are carried out in open water as opposed to on open water, which allows us to eliminate choice E. And as the final step before selecting D, potentially, we'll just read the whole thing to make sure that we capture an intended meaning. Most current benthic marine research, including chemical ecology research at Palmer Station and other sites along the Western Antarctic Peninsula, is carried out in open water without solid overhead ice cover, and the equipment and techniques are very much like those used in colder temperate waters, and that captures the intended meaning, gives the research something to do, and makes a complete sentence, whereas the original was, oddly enough, a very, very long fragment. So then let's talk about evaluating subject verbs. So step one, identify the main subject of the sentence as the entity that should be committing the primary action. Then as step two, you want to seek the main action or verb of the sentence that logically should be undertaken by that main subject. Then we get to like a little split. If the main action is clear, consider the singular and plural form of the subject and verb immediately to, to ensure consistency. Sometimes you're like, that's the subject, that's the verb. I don't need to go into this other step, which is if the main action is unclear, you need to first locate the proper verb in the choice that's going to be the main verb for the subject. Then you'll work to consider number and singular and plural forms. And then step four, of course, read your selection back into the sentence to ensure it captures the intended meaning of the original and creates a complete sentence as we need to do for every sentence correction on the executive assessment. So now that you've seen some different examples in this lesson about subject verb agreement, let's head on over to the whiteboard and take a look at a couple more so you can see how you'll want to execute those evaluations live when you're taking the exam so that you can free up time for the other formats on the verbal section. So here we have a, another sample sentence correction, and you can see that there's a really small underlined portion and a rather large sentence around it. Now, even when this occurs, you still wanna do everything the same way we always do. So we've got A through E here, and we're gonna put a little line over top for a possible error. And you want to read the sentence in its entirety, but we may end up using some of the tactics we just talked about to simplify our evaluation here in a moment. So many oceanographers unfortunately think of the upper water column of the open ocean as a biological desert, a misconception related to the fact that most epipelagic zooplankton are effectively invisible, either transparent or too small to be seen. This makes some oceanic studies seem unnecessary. So we start by wanting to find our main subject. And we find that our main subject is up here. It's the oceanographers. And we can see that the oceanographers still think. So we've got a subject verb pair there. That's fine. And if we go down to the underline, however, we actually are introduced to another subject of this. The pronoun this can function as a subject. And this makes is a second subject verb pair. And what happens when we use a comma is we create what is known as a run-on. Because a run-on has two independent clauses. and are not complete sentences. And the reason they are not complete sentences is because they actually should be two sentences. So this is one of the rarer subject verb agreement issues because it creates that run on that is not allowed. So we can eliminate any answer choices that also would be independent clauses with a complete subject verb pair, including choice B. Even though these is not going to be the right pronoun, we'll just focus on the subject verb aspect for right now. Now, if we go with making, 
Well, the issue here is we had our original verb up top of think. And we know that if we're going to create this descriptor, that making could refer to any of the other descriptive phrases. It becomes unclear. So making is not going to work. Neither will and making work because then we've created a list of think and making and those verb tenses are not going to align. So if, however, we introduce that and in choice E, we now can simplify the evaluation to confirm that we've got a dependent clause, meaning a subject and verb that are, are going to be referring back to something else in the sentence by just simplifying the evaluation. So many oceanographers think, we don't really care what they think necessarily, we'll read the whole thing in a moment, but many oceanographers think and this makes some oceanic studies seem unnecessary. Well, now it no longer, that second part of the sentence that is focused on our underlying portion is no longer going to stand alone as an independent clause. Because you can't say, and this makes. We need to know what the and refers back to. So choice E is what we'll select. And we'll now finally read the entire sentence once more just to confirm that everything aligns, many oceanographers unfortunately still think of the upper water column of the open ocean as a biological desert, a misconception related to the fact that most epipelagic zooplankton are effectively invisible, either transparent or too small to be seen, and this makes some oceanic studies seem unnecessary because that finally pairs the second verb of this to the original statement of what many oceanographers unfortunately still think. So let's go take a look at one more example to close out the lesson. So just here, going to set up the scratch work. As we always do, got A, B, C, D, E, put a little line over top for that potential issue that we identify. So starting the whole, with the whole sentence, the scientific study of human remains in Brazil date to the 19th century. Okay, on the exam, you'll want to immediately start looking at your subjects and your verbs to potentially expedite your evaluation. So we can see very early on that the scientific study is our main subject. So this is going to be our subject. And the verb here is going to be date. And if we have a singular study that study should dates. So this is going to be our more standard subject verb agreement error. We'll label that up. And by recognizing it early, we don't even need to necessarily read the whole sentence as it's written, because as soon as you find an error, you could just start working through it if you're 100% certain that it is in fact an error. So goodbye to A, goodbye to B, because we know those are both wrong immediately, because you can't change the subject. It's non underlined so then we also can eliminate choice E because that too has a date. So we've eliminated everything that says study date. It's got to be study dates. Then we've got our answer choices C and D. And the first difference you might identify is that C says back and D doesn't. This is going to be difficult to adjudicate whether or not you need that back. But there's a much easier difference at the end of the choices. We've got were and then a blank. Because if we try choice C, the scientific study of human remains in Brazil dates back to the 19th century when physical anthropology and archaeology also beginning. We need anthrop physical anthropology and archaeology to actually do something. So this creates a fragment by removing a necessary verb. Whereas if we keep the were there and we read the sentence once more with choice D, the scientific study of human remains in Brazil dates to the 19th century when physical anthropology and archaeology were also beginning as fields of investigation that captures the intended meaning, fixes the original number error in subject verb agreement, and introduces no new issues. So this is the main issue you want to focus on every on in every sentence direction, because no sentence can be complete without a main subject verb pair. Go ahead and do some practice exercises on your own to get a bit better at this very important aspect of sentence corrections.